Welcome again to the Marketing Study Guide. In this video, we will be looking at how to use the multi dimensional perceptual map. A multi dimensional perceptual map looks something like this. What you should see is in the grey colours is multiple brands, and at the same time, we have lots and lots of attributes. This template allows you to map up to 12 brands and up to 12 attributes at the same time. It is quite different to the traditional two-axis perceptual map, which is also available on the website. I have another video that talks about how you interpret it, but this video is how you actually make it. The download link is in the description of the video underneath, but when you open it up and download it, you'll find this. Welcome to create your own multi-dimensional perceptual map. All you do is follow the steps in yellow and steps are clearly labeled. Step 1, step 2, etc. In this case I've already set up some data so I've just called it soft drink consumer perceptions. Okay, And if you want to change it you just simply type over the top of it And that'll automatically update the map. Then you go through and whatever data you have, you enter your brands. I've just used soft drinks here. And across here, you actually list your attributes. Okay, so for soft drinks, I've used sweet for kids, as you can see. And then they've been scored 1 to 9. Okay, so actually step 2 is the data. Step 3 is to enter across here. Step four is in the data. Okay, so one to nine uh, for each brand. So you've got to fill in as much data as you have. Hopefully, it's coming from a survey, and I'll talk about that in another video. And basically, as it says, the higher the number, the greater the, the association the brand has. So one means very little association, five is a midpoint, nine is very high. So as you can see, we'll find a 9. Pepsi and Sweet are highly related, whereas Water and Sweet are fairly unrelated. Okay, Dr. Pepper, not for kids. Fanta, for kids. Water, half kids, half adults, so it's in the middle. So that's how the data would be input. Now if you'd have survey data, and it's not in a 1 to 9 scale, you can simply click here. You're then taken down to this part of the spreadsheet. And whatever your data is, if it's 5 or it's 7, you just put the maximum in. Put the data you have. So I've put an example here for 1 to 5. And all you have to do is then click that button. Okay, as long as you only change the grey cells, don't change the yellow, they've come down from what you've already put in above. But you can put those in, hit enter, and what will happen is this will repopulate in a 1 to 9 scale. But I've already got the data there. Okay, step 5 is probably the hardest uh, piece, but it's, it's not all that hard. Okay, I've just reframed the, the spreadsheet to see what we're doing so we can see the menu. Now to do this, we just need to add a solver add-in. Every copy of Excel, even a student version, will come with it. So you go to File, go to Options, go to Add-ins, and then down the bottom, Manage Excel Add-ins, hit Go. And just make sure that button's ticked. I've already got it ticked. So already have it. So when you have it, when you go to data, it appears over here. So you should be able to see it. Okay, I've just resized uh, the spreadsheet again. Now what we have to do, this is quite important, is once you've done that, you need to exit Excel, save it, save it, exit, and reopen the spreadsheet. That will make sure that this data support that allows you to do the calculation is sitting there in Excel. Now if you're working on an Apple Mac, you have a similar situation. 
you need to put that add in in but your menu is slightly different you select tools from the top menu then you should see add-ins and then you hit solver and once you've done that you are set to go all you need to do is hit that button it'll take five ten seconds depending on the complexity and it'll spit you down to your graph okay so here I just renamed that spreadsheet from before that name and I've produced this graph and that's as simple as it is if you want to read go back you click there if you want to start again you click there if you want to copy it to a word document for a report you right click it and simply save it copy it and then and then or save it as a picture or something like that okay some simple instructions just over here so that's it as easy to use as that re-enter data away we go so visit the site to get the download and check out the other videos about how to interpret the data and how to use other forms of maps.